Yeah. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Today is our afternoon session. This is November 23rd, and we have a couple of public hearings this afternoon. The first one is a uh, public hearing on ordinance number 21-01, Title IX. It's an amendment for a minimum one-acre size lot. The way this process will work is it'll be a staff report, a presentation by the applicant, which I believe would be Cinda. We'll take testimony of four of those are proposed proponents, uncommitted, and opponents. And then any other questions or rebuttal by Cinda. And then the board will uh, try and make the decision. Um, before I begin, I want to make sure there's no ex parte on this, but there. So I'm going to have to ask that. So at this time, I will open it up, Doug, at one o'clock even, and ask the staff to give us a report. You might ask if there's a conflict of interest. I mean, if someone had a development in. Is there, okay. For the, this is for the commissioners only. Does anybody feel like they have an ex parte or a conflict of interest on this ordinance? I do not. I do not. Okay. But the record show all three of us said no. At this time, I'll turn it over to Cinda. Okay, the staff report for the amendment to the Valley County Code minimum one acre lots. The amendment would change Valley County Code 9 5C 2 back to the way it was prior to 2006. It will allow the minimum lot size of one acre for single family subdivisions that use individual sewage disposal systems um, or septic systems and individual wells. Uh, I listed for your review in the staff report the way the current code reads, which requires a minimum of two acre lots. <sighs> Um, with a minimum size of one acre, and then the proposed modification, which would require just a minimum of one acre for any lot. So it kind of simplifies the math. <coughs> um, findings, legal notice was posted in the Star News on September 17th and September 24th. Potentially affected agencies, the Mountain Central Association of Realtors and known local surveyors were notified on September 2nd. The notice sheet was posted on bulletin boards at post offices and libraries in Cascade, Donnelly, McCall, and Yellow Pine. On September 2nd, the notice sheet was posted in the Valley County website under public hearing information. Responses received. Sarah Ardona, Idaho Transportation Department, has no objections, and Central District Health has no objections. Um, and each of you have attached to that with the actual ordinance, 21-01 that states have that code will read in the future. You have and the questions? reason why we did this back in, in there was 08, was the two acre parcels that we were trying to. The average of the two acres um, was, was changed back in 2006 six? because we were trying to get people to plot some open space. And we thought that perhaps that they would have, you know, some one acre lots with a much larger open space, you know, park or something plotted but nobody did. They just went with the average of two, however that fit in. Um, it never created any what we wanted it to do, so it did not work. Um, and so after discussions with the Board of County Commissioners, we um, made the proposed amendment to the Planning and Zoning Commission who recommended approval of it. And now I'm bringing it back to you. Uh, Central District Health, they require the minimum one acre for newly planted subdivision lots. And this doesn't affect PUDs or cluster yeah. development or anything like that? Or anything with central sewer, or central and, water. sewer and water. Okay. Okay, any staff, questions for staff? You know, the two acres, we just created a lot of weed patches. We have some, you know, I, I think it's harder to maintain two acres without an animal or something. So. I agree with you 100%. I think, um, like Cindy said, the intent was to to build open space and these subdivisions, but Cinda, um, can somebody that has a one acre parcels, they can't split it unless they do a shared well and shared septic. I mean, we just did an ordinance where you can do a, a mother-in-law house or whatever you call them. That has nothing to do with this. Th that will still be able to proceed even though it's one acre. Yes, because you're not splitting the lot, you're just allowing additional use of a one acre lot with Central District Health approval. With health approval, right. Okay. Who do we have on the phone? Uh, hello. Hello? Hello? Yeah, are you here for the uh, public hearing on the one acre parcel? No. Okay, are you here for the next public hearing? 
I am for the snowmobile. Okay. The if I could get you to mute your phone, please, I would sure appreciate it. I'm sorry. I thought it was muted. Is this going to be on video, by the way? It's not on the YouTube channel. Uh, it should be. It, yeah, it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm there right now. Hi, y'all. This is Scott Harris. Scott, it should be on. I think we're live. I'm I'm on the I'm on the link and it shows the last one is November 16th that's showing up. Didn't you say Max was on today's? He, could he get was on. on this morning, Jeff. Let me pull it really oh, quick on our Yeah, we're gonna look and see and make sure we're on here. Just hang on a sec, Scott. Okay. Okay, sorry, I thought I was on mute. That's all right. Hey, Elf. This yeah. is Jay Jake on. Uh, I was on mute as well, or I thought I was. Okay. Yeah, if you guys can mute, we'll, we'll do that snowmobile here in just a little bit. Okay. Sounds good. Oh. Can you tell, Doug? It says we're on, Mr. Chairman. Making me sign into a YouTube channel to get anywhere. <clears throat> hey, Scott, if you're on, could you try signing in again on that YouTube? Uh, sure. Yeah, one second here. I, I just did. Um, one second. We might need to call David. As you say, I'm looking at it and it's not. I showing up. It's, yeah, it's not on. You don't have it? Not, I'm so, Doug, let's go off and reboot it and see if it will come okay, back. Okay, it just, it just came on. Just now came on while I was watching it. Okay, so then we're good. Okay. All righty. Thanks. Thanks, you guys. So we're going to go back to this public hearing. Any more questions for staff? If not, I'll open it up for public testimony. Is there anyone on the phone or in the audience that wants to speak in favor? As a proponent, no. Please let the record show there was none. Is there anyone on the phone or in the public that is uncommitted? Please let the record show there is none. Is there anyone on the phone or in the audience that is opposed to this ordinance? Please let the record show no one is a public hearing at 108 and begin deliberations. I'm fully in support of this. I think it makes sense for our county. I think we probably uh, <clears throat> need some smaller lots so that we can get some more development going. Okay, so I'd entertain a motion then to approve ordinance 20-01. 21-01. <clears throat> what, sorry, 21-01. I move that we approve ordinance number 21-01, Title Nine. I will second that. Moved and second. Any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, motion passed. <clears throat> you have something there to sign or you can bring it in later. I've got a breaker. You want to sign it now? Well, we can wait, do it after the day. It's whatever you want yeah. to do. Let me know when you're ready, Doug, and I'll start on the next one. I'm ready, sir. Okay, we're going to move on down our agenda. The next item is an action item. This is a public hearing, Ordinance 21-02, the snowmobile ordinance. And uh, this time I'll ask if anyone in the three commissioners have any ex parte or conflict of interest. I do not. I do not. I do not either. So we will proceed. Uh, this time I will turn it over to staff and... Okay, the staff report for proposed ordinance 21-02. Uh, the proposal would amend Valley County Code, Title 5, Chapter 5, Snowmobiles, and Chapter 7, Rights of Way. The Board of County Commissioners have had multiple meetings and public hearings on this issue. Um, attached for your review were all the minutes from those previous meetings. Findings, legal notice was posted in the Star News on November 5th, 2020. Potentially affected agencies and people who previously responded with comments were notified on October 21st, the notice sheet was posted on bulletin boards at post offices and libraries in Cascade, Donnelly, McCall, and Yellow Pine, and at the Board of County Commissioner meeting room door. 
The notice sheet proposed ordinance were posted on the Valley County website at the public hearing information on October 21st. Responses received. Rick Saranen would like tracked vehicles under 2,000 pounds to be allowed or for the tracked vehicle second item to be omitted. Aspenwood Holdings LLC is opposed to closing roads to wheeled vehicles during the year. The LLC owns 435 acres located on or adjacent to Anderson Creek Road in Valley County. The letter includes a survey of the property. This property is being developed for 22 residential lots that require year-round access for owners and emergency vehicles. The absence of year-round access will result in a material devaluation of the property. The proposed ordinance is problematic for six primary reasons. One, the rights of Aspen Wood Holdings predate the rights of Valley County and is protected under federal laws. Two, regulatory takings of property. Three, denial of emergency vehicle access. Four, denying access to licensed wheeled vehicles in favor of recreational vehicles is not permitted under state law. Five, the ordinance will likely result in less snowmobile access to Valley County. And six, reduction of property tax base for Valley County. Um, attached to this was the proposed ordinance and the various responses we received in the minutes from February 3rd, January 21st, January 13th of 2020, and then December 9th, December 2nd, November 18th, July 29th, June 24th, and May 13th of 2019, previous times when these matters were discussed. Since the staff report was uh, completed and then originally emailed to you, <coughs> I did an addendum last week. Um, with four <clears throat> different exhibits. Um, exhibit one was from Rosecki, and he was concerned with the towing of vehicles if left in the right of way. Exhibit two, Jay Jakes, concerned with the towing of vehicles if left in the right of way, and how are we going to enforce that? Exhibit three from Woods, I believe it was Mark Woods, and he com commented in regards to the parking. Um, and then exhibit four from Kimball D. Gorley, questions about verbiage and, and wrong state statutes. And he was correct that state statute should have been Title 67 and, and not Title 71. So I did change that in the ordinance. Um, and then since this was completed, we received additional correspondence um, over the weekend. And I don't know if you want to accept it into the record. Um, one moment, please. I'm going to. There was a letter from. There was a series of emails that were sent to you. I'm just trying to verify. I believe Mr. Gorley's letter was already in the record. Sorry. We received a, another letter. I believe it was dated this weekend from Scott Harrison family um, concerning parking in Francie Wallace and um, their ability to access Bergdorf. I believe you all received a copy of that. Mm -hmm. And then a letter dated <coughs> November 13th from Kimball Gorley, Aspenwood Holdings LLC. I believe you all had a copy of that previous to this meeting. Did everybody have a copy of that? That's the one I gave you this morning? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just handed it. So sitting in yes, this one. That, that actually was in the staff report. So this. This one you sent us out, the stuff in red is the stuff that we've changed since the last time we talked about this? Yes, that's what has been changed from the adopted ordinance. And the second letter I was referring to that I received today is actually in your staff report. So then the part that Mark Woods was talking about, the parking lots, you got those in under the Part B groom trails. The Mark Woods one? Yes. Mm 
That was in the addendum that I emailed to you. 552B. And it says, you know, these parking lots are going to have days that they will be completely full. That letter. I haven't seen that one yet. It was in an email sent to you November 19th. And it started with, I have to apologize. As I just realized the deadline for comments on this ordinance was that one. I'm looking. November 19th. Which one are you looking for? November 19th. It was the addendum that I sent out with four exhibits attached. Mm -hmm. Ten fifty-seven a.m. Yep. So are you saying, Senator, that you got these comments into the ordinance itself, though? That's my question. The issue with the parking lots, the no. track vehicles? No, those are just comments to you. The only thing I changed from the version sent to you originally was the, the proper state statute, That's not right. the 70 to 67. I made no other changes to it since the original that I sent to you besides that. Okay. Any more questions for staff? I think we need to open this up to the public and see what they have to say. The applicant. The applicant was okay. And and Larry's the applicant. Yes. Yep. So Larry, come on up. You've seen these letters of concern? Yes, I have. And how do you want to address those? Well, for the most part, um, any of the parking issues, we're not taking parking away. We're just trying to get people to park in the same areas uh, um, so that we can get more people in there before we had them all spread out. Uh, we'll still have the same amount of parking, the same, you know, once, of course, first come, first serve. But um, once, uh, once we're full, we're full. But um, we're definitely not limiting parking. We're actually adding and directing so that it's a little more organized. And then there was also a comment, I can't remember who made it, that uh, uh, this was going to cause less people to come in because we're adding another rule that the truth is we're just trying to make it easier for them to park and give them uh, a little more space and a lot more, uh, make access easier instead of more difficult. That's the reason we, add, we also added the new road into Francie Wallace. So did you read the letter from Mark Woods on on how to run that parking lot? Should we be putting those rules into this ordinance? Yes. Yeah, I did read that and we've got uh, almost everything done out there. Um, I'd also <clears throat> like to point out that a lot of the, oh, there was a comment about the most important thing is making it larger. The McCall Snowmobile Club hired a gentleman uh, to, to um, look at that property below because IDL said they would look at us letting us expand it, but we have to test the ground to make sure water levels and stuff. So they have hired somebody to do that survey. And as soon as that's finished, we'll apply for a permit from IDL to expand that parking lot. It'll almost double the size. 
And that's, you mean below, you mean south and east? So it would be east and uh, mainly just east. Just mainly just east? Yeah. Okay, and then there was also the comment, I believe it was from Mr. Roski, that talks about if abandoned vehicles, and he talks about if a snowmobile quits on the way in, and they go back to tow it, and they come back, and their car's gone. How, how, we're not going to be towing anything other in the middle of the night, are we? That would be up to sheriffs. I don't tow anything, yeah. and I wouldn't get asked for it to be towed or get permission. But um, if a ve we have had a ve abandoned vehicles out there, and in fact, we've already had one this year, and fortunately, the phone call was made. The person was told, and they they moved it. And then what did we? I'm trying to figure and remember what did we end up doing for a spot for all the folks out in Warren and Seasash and all that? Did they they get the whole north side of the road? They've got the they've got the front end of the parking lot. The yeah, the very front end of the north side is for the Seasash um, for those long term people. And how many spots are there? Do you remember? For cars, you could probably put twenty cars in there easy. Right now, we've already got four trailers from. Um, people that are leaving them out there full time that go in there. And, and that's the second, that would be the second rollback. Second rollback. Yeah. And then and what did we do? It. I know we had discussion on the commercial guys leaving their trailers overnight. Mm -hmm. It's still first come, first serve. First come, first serve. And they can't have, and this is IDL rules. You can't have any advertisement on it at all. But and how do we, sorry, I was just gonna say, they, they are not gonna be allowed to leave their trailers overnight. Um, they, they will leave some trailers overnight. Yeah. So then how do we plow that? We plow around them. It makes it difficult, but we plow around them. So we plow around all the people from CSASH and Warren too. What about the um, parking storage that we're getting going on right now? Are we going to differentiate that? that? The storage parking that we're getting right now with the bigger trailers and we're, we're trying to work with uh, commercial guys to get them to limit that. Well, uh, yeah. So that first, so the very first row is for the guys from Warren and Seek right. The next row. What about the private folks? Is what I was saying, Larry. Say it again. What about the private individuals that are leaving trailers up there, enclosed trailers? They're leaving them there. So how are we going to differentiate if we're allowing the commercials to leave their park, their stuff parked? How are we going to differentiate between the private and the commercial stuff? We're, we're just trying to hook up with them and make sure we got everybody in there. We're going to have a guy working in the parking lot. For the first part of the season and we've actually changed the way so everybody parks at an angle right. and it's going to give us a lot more room if we keep the trailers back we can put a car in front of them <laughs> and they have to realize that's the that's the nature of it if you leave your trailer and you don't have a car there will be possibly a car parked in front of it if you come back and larry or cinda i'm not sure you asked this to you when did we when did we decide to take anderson crick off this list last meeting. Yeah, so I, I that wasn't the choice that, that I made. That was at the direction of prosecuting attorney. So I took that out a month ago. We decided to do it because the, there have that, not been, there's a lot of information that needs to be resolved there. We talked about it at the last meeting and trying to take that out so we can move forward with this ordinance. And That's right. Now yeah, and then she told me to take it out. Um, I don't know if I was here for that conversation or not. All the others, everything else is in there other than the Anderson Creek. Yes. Well, I could, my feeling right now is I'm not sure I want to leave that off, but I want to take public testimony first from folks online to see if there's something else I'm not thinking of. The last I remember on that is we were going to try and work with the developer to give us an easement through one parcel. Was it Larry on the north side of the road? And you had talked to Jake Strohmeyer about a bypass below the road. And yeah, so I've looked at a couple different things. The lower part of the road goes through quite a bit of wetlands, and we actually got to um, go down and cross uh, uh, that next creek down there, which means we'd have to have a bridge. Um, we've looked at there. We don't have the funds to buy the 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 property that they were interested in having us buy. You know, I still I still think you could take a D just like we did on on no business. You could go to the south side of Anderson Creek with a D8 cat and three culverts and uh, make enough room for a 
uh, a groomed trail up right next to the regular road. So you want to treat it the same as we did no business, where half the road is plowed? I, I, I think we should, and I think, it, to be <clears> honest <throat> with you, it, it should be left in there with with the point that if we come to an understanding, if we can come to a, an agreement, then we can get it opened up. We just got to get that understanding and have the time. It's too late now to get in there, but... Um, mm -hmm. It wouldn't be difficult to make a double road just like we did at no business. And I think that's certainly a strong possibility. My concern is that we would lose our leverage if we just pulled Anderson Creek out. And, and then they would be coming to us asking for us to let them plow. Now we've destroyed our whole grooming program up Anderson Creek, which I think is a huge mistake. So I don't know. Well, let's take the public testimony and we can come back to that topic. Any other questions? to think of everything that we had discussed and there was a lot of discussion on Francie Wallace <clears throat> and not allowing all those commercial guys in there rent free and just park five trailers in there so I don't Do you, would you like me to respond to that I would okay so in order to charge rent or a fee we have to have a commercial lease if we have a commercial lease then the lease goes out to bid to anybody that wants to get it we have our lease with IDL is a recreational lease. That does not allow us to charge rent or, or anything to those guys. The IDL has said they will have a discussion with us later on on the possibility of doing that as long as the funds go directly to the maintenance of the parking lot. But at this point, we're not allowed to charge anything. Which is, I, I, I was going to say, and I understand what she's saying, and I thought that's the reason that we said we weren't going to allow any over long-term storage of vehicles in those parking lots. Yeah, we, whether it was private or commercial. And I, I mean, I, I realize we can't charge fees for it. So the obvious solution to me is that we just, we're not allowing people to leave their stuff in the parking lot that's going to be highly congested. I thought we had talked about everybody had to be out there by the end of the night. The well, the you've got you've got a lot of people that stay in Warren and see <laughs> Except that. for the Warren folks. And see, and, and you've got you've got people that come in and rent in there too. Just just people. On the phone. Hey, just, just say whoever's on the phone, please mute your phone. We can hear what you're saying. <laughs> I think what we did was we took it back to what is four uh, B five. B B five. Mm -hmm. and it says overnight parking, parking of wheeled vehicles and trailers overnight or between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m. is only allowed in designated areas. That's correct. Vehicles may be towed, and then you were going to leave it up to the snowmobile advisory group to come up with that parking lot plan. So if you guys went out there now, before it was just a big open parking lot, and now we've got blocks. So we've got blocks that show the different roads. The very front road is where the cars park. The second and third row is for long term. And then after that, it's for everybody else that's coming in. That way we can identify it. I want to repeat this so everybody hears it really good. Overnight parking. Parking in wheel vehicles and trailers <laughs> overnight or between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m. is only allowed in designated area. Correct. Is everything signed? I mean, all signage is up. So if the sheriff goes and drives through there, they know exactly where people signage are. Signage is not up yet. I've ordered... Um, I've ordered uh, about a thousand dollars of the signs that aren't finished yet. The Rocky Mountains doing them. We'll have signs up. We're going to have maps that show where designated is and all the designations. We've got entryway signs, exit signs. We'll have plenty of signs when this is done. And and the snowmobile grooming uh, committee is in favor of this. Yes, they actually. This was put together by the McCall Snowmobile Club and the advisory board. Okay, any more questions for staff? If not, I'm gonna open up to the public. Uh, the only other thing I was gonna ask about is uh, there's section 553, closed public roadways. There's a section that just, and I think we need to clarify it. It says uh, East Side Drive slash Brush Creek is one of the closed roads. So I don't know if we wanna clean that up so it says um, from Brush Creek parking lot, you said drive through that Silver Gate Road, whatever you want to call that. It's not actually called the Brush Creek Road because we're not precluding people from driving up from the south end of East Side Drive. We're just keeping them off the section of the road that we're grooming between Brush Creek parking lot and the Silver Gate. East Side Drive is actually closed. Yeah, it's not plowed in the wintertime. Right, but we, we're not, 
we're not part of this ordinance is not to keep people off the south end of that is what i'm saying oh i'll clear down but no yeah because i mean no. there's loads of people no, are driving you're, you're up right this is just from brush Creek. so just for my mind i think it would maybe behoove us to clarify that yeah just you're absolutely bit. right so what do you want to say there dave brush creek it north says the closure shall begin at the trailhead of warren wagon road no business road high valley road so where are you looking because i didn't see that when i was looking at And that's basically what we're dealing with is trailheads. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I know what the intent is. Don't be doing that. Truth. Believe me. <laughs> but I just want to make sure that's what we're saying. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. the yeah. closure shall begin at the trailheads. One wagon, no business, High Valley, Clear Creek, East Side Drive, Brush Creek, and Green Gate. Unless we mitigate a plan. Yeah, what I'm saying is just we want to make I sure that you're saying. we're not saying anything about uh, yeah. this section of road south yeah. where we're. we're Hello. Uh, grooming the road. Please accept your you said drive. Please silent like your phone. Four miles of you said drive that we're not touching I, and we don't I want to include. Well, it says the closure shall begin at the trailheads of Warren Wagon, blah, blah, blah. But where's the other end of the Hello? Drive, Brush Creek. Hello? Trailhead of East Side Drive, Brush Creek. I understand the trailhead, okay. but where's the other end of it? So we're not clarifying where that closure ends. I would assume up in the mountains. It's not that way though. Send it there. You said I, drive. I, I, okay. you said the, drive the only one, the, Creek the only like like Dave say, Fisher Beam is saying, the only one that would be affected by that is Eastside Drive, and that's from yeah. that would just be put in there from um, Warren Wagon Road to the beginning of the Brush Creek Trail, which is approximately one quarter mile. I don't know. Someone will have to write that. And I, I can I can yeah, get yeah, that. I can just clean that up. Like yeah, so. yeah. Or Eastside Drive at Brush Creek. Most people are calling that Lemma, Lemma Road. Yeah. So when East Side Drive comes around and crosses North Beach, you're saying from there north to Brush Creek. When where East Side Drive start runs into Warren Wagon Road, we actually groom East Side Drive back a quarter mile to where it turns back onto IDL and goes back up oh. the gate. It's just about a quarter mile. Okay, so we yeah. need to spell that one out. Right. Absolutely. That's one correction there. Yeah, and it's it's non-maintained anyway. It never has been maintained. So we'll let Larry write that. I'll, I'll do that. He can help you with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any more You're questions for staff? I know, I'll do it. <laughs> yes. Okay, at this time then, I'm going to open it up to the public. And we're going to take testimony from anyone who is a, pro a proponent of this ordinance. Is there anyone on the phone as a proponent? Yeah, Mark Wood. Mark Wood. Okay, Mark, I need your name and the town you live in. Okay, this is Mark Wood. I live in McCall, Idaho, 25 Pleasant Acre Drive. And I am a proponent for this uh, <clears throat> primarily because it helps us organize some of our parking lots in Valley County that we are responsible for and to just kind of expand a little bit on Larry's explanation of Francie Wallace and Brush Creek. I'd like to share that uh, the current plan, uh, for lack of any other, is to have everything available for overnight and long-term parking, except for the east side and the west side of the parking lot, where we need to store snow. So in essence, we would have three full rows in Francie Wallace parking lot, that could accommodate overnight or long-term parking. The biggest issue we've always had is where do we push snow to when the east edge and the south edge have overnight parking in there and we cannot push our snow anywhere to store. And we're working at putting together a plan to accommodate a very similar situation in Brush Creek where we keep the edges available for snow storage. So, in essence, I think we're going to increase overnight parking available for everyone, for the residents and for the visitors in that area. And uh, with that, I have, if you have any questions of me, uh, I'll try to answer. Mark, you sent us a, a deal here while back on, on the parking lots. I want to make sure that what you were trying to get through, we've got in the ordinance. Have you had a chance to look at that? Yeah, a little bit. And we're all good there? I think so. Uh, my biggest concern is we can't spell out everything. 
but basically if what we post out there is agreeable to the commissioners as far as what I've just explained, and we have signs pertaining to that. And as Larry said, we have these new uh, concrete barriers out there to identify the parking arrangement. On those barriers, we're each end of a parking row, we're going to have these signs posted with a drawing to help people see what we're trying to accomplish. And we'll also have the ordinance there and state that what the rules are. And so if we state that, you know, a trailer and truck is in this area, but a single vehicle is not in this 30 foot or 50 foot length, we need to try to determine what is appropriate parking and what is, and identify that, and get it on the side. Does that make sense? Yep, makes perfect sense to me. And we've got the parking lots built, the wording, the snowmobile parking lots built into the ordinance. Those are new additions. So I think we've got that covered pretty well. Good. Okay. Hey, Mark, this is Dave. This is Dave talking yeah. to you. Hey, I just was wondering too, I asked Larry the same question, but we're still failing to address how we're going to regulate the folks that are using the, the uh, snowmobile lots as storage units for their, their vehicles when they're headed back down to the valley or they're leaving their vehicles up at the snowmobile lots so that they have a place to park these things when they can't park them at their house or somewhere else. That's a difficult situation. Uh, <laughs> we got to deal with it. <laughs> can't say that we anybody has a pat answer other than going through a, a something in a commercial status, which our lease, our lease is not. And so, the best we can do at this point, uh, leaving it a non-commercial uh, recreational lease, is to at least work with those folks, give them a place to park. The biggest deterrent could be that they pull away from it that space in front of it or behind it that they left for their tow vehicle is not guaranteed they could pull up depending on how they parked it they could pull up and not be able to hook up to it and that's just the nature of the beast and the vehicle blocking it could be in warm for a week or 10 days That's the best way to at this point with what we have available to us. Is there any way we could go back and look at the 14-day restriction or even our own day restriction on a trailer that's been left there for 14 days or longer could be towed? Or We know that's probably somebody that lives down Warren Wagon or somewhere and they're just using it for a storage lot. Would that help? Would that work? Well, at what point do you draw the line that that's a resident in there in Warren or Seatash, and it's going to be there for 14 days. It's going to be there for all oh, winter. Five days. Yeah. Well, and according to Larry, we've got about 20 sites there on the north side of the road for those folks in Warren. My feeling is once that's full, you're out of luck. You can't park it in the main well, parking lot and take up that space for the rest of winter. I just don't think that works. There, there's some truth to that. I mean, we're going to have, on the very north edge, there's room for about five single vehicles. And then the first main row of truck trailer type parking is available. And we have three rows like that. Basically, in the center would be available for long term parking. Once that's full, it's full. And if the vehicle pulls away, anybody can park in that spot. You know, if it's left on the east edge or the south edge, we store snow, that's tall way to go. No overnight parking, period. Even if it's spring now. Well, I guess my feeling right now is let's see how this new system works. Let's see if we actually have a problem this winter. But I agree uh, with Dave. It's the yeah. folks that live up here that are using it as, as a storage lot for their trailer all winter because they can't park it in their, their lot and where they live. Or somebody else does snow removal if they park it. In I, I understand that, and, I, and I'm not disagreeing with you that that's that is an issue. But the same token, fortunately, it's a handful of individuals that are doing that. But as you just said, let's try this for this winter. See how everybody kind of gels, and we go get through this. And uh, 
we go from there. If we need to make adjustments, we make adjustments. And I don't know enough about the snowmobile program, just full disclosure. I don't, you know, it's not my forte, so I'll go with the recommendation of everyone else. With the deputies but this winter. Our, uh, our last conversation was, is that we were trying to mitigate the long-term parking in that area that we were, we were trying to get those guys out of there so that as people came to the lot, it wasn't full at eight or nine o'clock in the morning. It was first come, you get to use the parking lot. So I think what we're doing is we're actually allowing some, I won't call them bad actors, but people that are abusing the system to continue to abuse the system. And five years from now or 10 years from now, when we have doubled our grooming program, does this solve the issue? And I don't believe it does. So, you know, we can do it this year, but we're going to be revisiting this conversation again because we don't, that parking lot is not large enough to just allow people to go up there and park their vehicles and continue on. So I, I think that we're, we're punting on this one <laughs> and I think we're going to be revisiting in a year or two because I don't see how this resolves the issue and it wasn't, this doesn't solve the conversation that we had in the spring. And again, I'm going with whatever you guys recommend because I don't, that's not my forte. Um, well, that's what I keep thinking about. You know, out in the woods, you can't cap in the same spot more than 14 days. Yeah. We can fly the same rule here. You can't bring your trailer up, park it in there as a storage place, even if you might snowmobile out of it. Just because you live down in the warm wagon or somewhere else in McCall, you can't just take it up there and leave it. My feeling is, okay, then let's limit that activity to 14 days and then it's got to move. Well, in the forest, you can go up and camp for 14 days and you're right with your vehicle the whole time. I mean, this is, you're leaving something in just an overnight parking lot. You're not camping beside it. You're not, no. you know, you're driving up there with it. But I was it. just using that as an example of 14 days. Yeah. But but we can make it a, you know, longer or shorter. I mean, I, I agree. We're punting the issue down the road and I think we're still going to have Six or eight trailers in there, they're going to be there all winter long from people that don't want to put them in storage. Yeah. And so we're just becoming a, you know, a free storage for people. Yeah. 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 But let's, my feeling now is let's let it go this winter and see how it works and then we can come back and tighten it up for next year if we have to. Hopefully the word will get out that, you know, maybe you can. Do like they do down in Boise, put a little pink mark on their tire, and two weeks later, if it's still there, that that would be one you'd have to visit the owner and let them know they can't do that. But. I think it's a great opportunity for somebody for a private industry to open up a snowmobile parking lot and charge people for the privilege of doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mark, anything else? Um, I would just like to have this. I, I agree with what everyone is saying there about the issue with the long-term parking. At some point in time, uh, the biggest issue is trying to differentiate people that live back there, people that are visiting back there, people that are just storing their vehicles, their trailer in the parking lot. And granted, 14 or 18 days, whatever you decide, if they wiggle it to the next row or they take it down to Brush Creek, that constitute moving um, that I don't know it's just one of those conundrums that we're all trying to grab hold of and, and come up with a solution that would really happen yet so I don't disagree with you I just haven't heard of a good solution so I my vote is we just go with it for this year and uh, or maybe even two years and just see how things go and we adjust accordingly that's all I have. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks, Mark. Is there anyone else on the phone that is a proponent of this that wishes to speak? Hey, I'll, hey this is JJ. I don't know. I, I am a proponent for up in that area, but uh, I have a different opinion on their business. So, it, it, does that mean I'm opposed? Or <laughs> You're going to have to make that, that determination sense? yourself. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, <laughs> When we get to the opposition, Jay, come back on and we'll we'll talk about the opposition. But you're, as far as you're concerned, you're you're okay with the way we're doing the the Frenchie Wallace and Brush Creek? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the phone that is a propo proponent of this? Uh, this is Scott Harris. Hey, Scott, go ahead. Um, uh, Scott Harris, I live in McCall 86 Ilka Lane, and my family and I own Bergdorf for over 100 years. Um, I just wanted to point out this is an important economic driver for the community, especially in the winter. Uh, we depend on snowmobile access for ourselves, for employees, for guests, uh, at the time when the road becomes impassable until it opens in the spring. Uh, we have employees that need parking as well as guests um, and ourselves occasionally when we go in and out. Sometimes the vehicle can be there for uh, two or three weeks at a time. Um, and I, I just want to make sure I, you're mentioning uh, CSASH and Warren, but I want to point out uh, Bergdorf also has permanent residents that live in there. I hope you're including them in your comments about CSASH and Warren. Yes, I am. Okay, good. Uh, we, um, we just want to make sure that there's going to be designated parking available. We, we do try, and we're going to try moving forward, if, there, if one, uh, like for instance, our current managers have two vehicles uh, that they uh, consider parking the second vehicle down the road in the, in the Brush Creek lot, and shuttle back and forth, but we, we do need to have a trailer there uh, with a vehicle. And I, I want to just be sure that we are going to have that availability. And Larry, as far as I understood you right, you guys said there was like maybe 20 spots on the north side there where they will be able to park. Yeah, there's, there'll be the same amount of parking for, uh, as we had last year. We're just going to have it designated so they're not spread up all over the every place, so it's easier to uh, plow. As, as as we all know, it's the snowmobilers that are paying for all the plowing right. and cleaning. But there's the same amount of room. And it's the same for Brush Creek as well. Is there a designated spot? No, we have we haven't broken Brush Creek. <laughs> so out Brush yet. Creek's on. That's a whole other challenge. That thing grew by another twenty five percent this last summer too. So we're going to have more space down there. So then I guess the word to get to the folks at CSASH and Bergdorf and Warren is there's a certain amount of spots available and it's first come, first serve. As things are growing, that's the way it is in all of Valley County. Okay. Scott, did you get that? I, I did get that. The problem is when the lot's full, people pull into those areas anyway, regardless of whether they're long-term or not. Well, and then that blocks the folks that come up on the weekend to snowmobile and they go somewhere else. So. That's the loss that we get. We're taking up space for, for the people that are actually coming up for the weekend. Sure, my, my point being those, those slots should be de designated and enforced to be used by uh, backcountry folks. Um, I, I would hope there's some effort to do that. Well, I hope, I think as we get through this, probably it's gonna take another winter, I'm assuming, but we can fine tune this even more of course, the goal is to make the parking lot bigger, and that's going to really help out a lot. That's sure. the goal. I, I have another issue attendant to this uh, uh, ordinance as proposed. It's talking about vehicles blocking the roadway. Um, we've had difficulty in the past in the springtime after the grooming stops and the snow starts to recede, and they're intervening uh, blocks of pavement. And... Uh, when you're coming down from the backcountry, people still have to get in and out. And the only way they can do that is by snowmobile. Um, they have to park their snowmobile or either park their snowmobile or in the case of our prior manager, unfortunately, just drive on the concrete or on the asphalt. Uh, you have to park your, your snowmobile and walk to the parking lot uh, and then shuttle whatever you're going to bring back to your snowmobile, shuttle it back, and then take your vehicle back to the parking lot. The problem is that can be a couple of miles uh, in the later part of the year, um, and there's no place to park your vehicle. It would be it would be nice if there was a place to park the vehicle uh, off the road or uh, close to being off the road. Uh, the problem is the county. Uh, the, the deputies have been quite aggressive about uh, uh, pushing vehicles that are, this is even before the road's going to be plowed, 
about uh, uh, contacting us, for instance, uh, to get our vehicle off of the roadway, um, I, I guess what I'm asking is it would be nice if there were some areas plowed enough off the road uh, in the latter part of the year so that we could pull a vehicle off the road, let's say every half mile or whatever, if an area was plowed enough. Otherwise, you can't get off the road. You, you really, if you're in that situation, you have to park either on the road or partially on the road. Or you have to walk the two miles to get your yeah. car. Yeah, as I say, the problem with that Correct. is we're not doing any maintenance on the road at that time. So we wouldn't be able to. Yeah. The only person that could plow that would be the snowmobile club. With the front end loader, that would be the only thing that would work on that stretch, right? Larry, you want to, and then Kevin, if you want to say anything on that. And I don't think that's part of an ordinance. I think that is something that that's just those a service. scenarios, you know, come up. We talk with Jeff, or we talk to the snow dealers. Yeah, that's pretty specific. Yeah, actually does say, uh, if a wheel vehicle gets stuck on a groom trail or closed road, it talks about that. Mm -hmm. This could be remedied if in the last part of the season before the grooming is stopped, before the pavement starts to emerge, if a couple of places could be plowed wider for people to park off the side, beside the road. That that would solve the problem. Scott, it doesn't have to be groomed the whole time. It just would be in um, the last part of the season. So it's 553D, Cinda. Then that's stuck on a groomed trail or closed road. I think the time frame that we're talking about is past the end of our grooming. We're put away. And it would be prior to any kind of summer maintenance as far as plowing yep. you know, the road open. I mean, we generally don't plow until middle of June at the earliest, sometimes later. Oh, uh, it's usually, yeah, yeah maybe the first of June. It depends on the winter, but yeah, yeah, my feeling right. is, you know, I guess you're going to have to walk the two miles to get your car. I think we could change it to say that we weren't going to take it after we stopped grooming operations. But uh, well, if, if I might make a suggestion, the, the last grooming trip, um, I'm sorry, uh, the last groomer, the last trip with the groomer, if you just widened the road in a couple of places along the path of the grooming, that would then melt similar to how the pavement melts, or it would at least be an area that potentially you could pull off beside the road. Larry, or Sheriff, you want to you want to answer this? Usually, there's a foot to a foot and a half of ice at the bottom of those trails, and our groomers aren't made to be plows. Um, we'd have to use a front end loader, and and like I said before, that's all paid for by uh, the grooming certificates. Now, I don't think it'd be a problem for them to hire a private contractor to go in and plow those spots, so they've got places to park. But uh, once we once we stop grooming, we do our spring maintenance, shut everything down and put the stuff away. And we could never cut. The groomers aren't made to cut ice like that. No. That, that last part of that road, it would damage the equipment. And Sheriff, what about the rule of not uh, between the end of grooming season and before we get the summit open? I know there's some law that says you can't leave an abandoned vehicle on a public road. I don't know. How do we address this? Don't have that, that code section, but um, if that road is melted out and people drive there, you know, and it's, I mean, if they hit that vehicle, or, I mean, technically, there aren't, you know, they've left their vehicle on a groomed or on a, a roadway. So, how much time frame are we talking about? That would be. So, Scott, are you still on? I am, but Chair, you you've been broken up the whole the whole time here intermittently. It's for some reason difficult to hear you, even with the prior prior testimony um, on the telephone. It's fine on the internet, but uh, no. All I'm suggesting is considering plow, not. I I know how the groomer works, and I've seen the blade in action. Um, simply knocking down the snow. Uh, maybe a, a 10 foot wide swath on the sh near the shoulder in an area where it's possible to do that. How often do you guys do that? I mean, do you, you leave your car parked there for days on end or is it just the day that you come out 
you stop your snowmobile and you walk down and get your car and come back and load the snowmobile and then you're gone? No, at times it could be it could be a week. Mm. Uh, my, my concern is your liability of leaving that car parked on a roadway. If it gets hit in the middle of the night, you might be liable for the damage. I'm, I'm totally with you, Eld. I, I totally get that, and I am completely in agreement. I am just suggesting that there might be a possibility of that last-minute widening in a couple of areas where it's feasible to do so. Before the before the groomer stops running, before before the season stops. That is more of a maintenance and operations issue, not an ordinance issue. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I think the ordinance currently prohibits parking on the roadway in the travel way. Yeah, and, and this one here talks winter. about this one here talks about on a groom trail or a closed road. Scott, and I think the question is, and I moved to a different microphone. We are having our microphones upgraded, but that one's hard to hear. I think the question is, is who is going to be responsible for doing this? You're asking the county to maintain a section of road that, um, first of all, we don't have maintenance crews out there. And the snowmobile and groom, grooming is maybe complete and may not have the proper equipment. So what I'm hearing you ask is the county to do something that we may not physically have the ability to do without, you know, having to take equipment out there. I, I understand. I understand that. And I, I, like I said, I've seen the, I've seen the groomer in action with the blade. Um, I think if they would just knock down an area a little bit to, so that uh, there isn't a big bank of snow there, uh, there are several areas. The road is wider and the shoulder is flat. That I, I I don't see that that would be a huge issue to just take a swing through there for 50 feet or whatever for the width of the groomer. Make a, maybe that could be a request to the snowmobile grooming uh, group. It, it I don't think should be in a nope. ordinance. I, I mean, that's more... Send us right an operational function. It's sure. Not no, I wasn't asking for it to be an ordinance. No, I, I was not asking that. I was just asking for consideration. And if Mark's still on, maybe maybe he can speak to it. But uh, no, I'm not. I'm not asking for that to be an ordinance. I'm just asking for some consideration. I think my it's not. It's not just me. It's it's not just me. It's other people that also live back there. Yep, Larry. Larry wants to say something. Yeah, I, I would suggest that you, so the second Thursday of every month, we have a groomer advisory board meeting in Donnelly, and I would suggest you come to that board meeting and discuss it with the advisory board, and then I'll bet we can, I'll bet we can figure something out. <laughs> We're pretty good at solving problems. Sure, yeah, I, I, I'm not asking for a big, a lot of extra effort, honestly. I, I think if, if we just had two spots or whatever that we could, that were just a little bit wider that we could get off the road, uh, parallel, parallel park off the road. And Larry, my question, so Scott is concerned about um, the 20 cars being reserved for the backcountry folks. So is there signage that states these are for? There'll be signage that says that's for long term uh, at the front and then the first three rows. And once that's gone, it's gone. Okay. You know, and I don't know how many more people. It seems specifically designated for backcountry parking. It's specifically designated for long term. Can we just change but that does verbiage? It, does it say backcountry residents? Uh, that um, might negate a lot. No, of not necessarily. Okay. Well, that might negate issues, and we talked about doing that last year in the spring. We talked about specifically making a section for Warren for C session for Bergdorf. And, and right now, that first, uh, like Mark was saying, uh, farthest north, there's a section up there where he said about five or six cars. I think you get about nine in there. But that is for the Warren, Seasash, Bergdorf people. That's where they have been parking that. And that place is exactly the same size as it was last year and the year before. So certainly, I, um, at times, though, the commercial vendors are there as well. Yeah, we've had a little discussion with them about that too, trying to get them to hunker down a little bit. Because we're gonna all have to, for this first year, all work together 
and see what we can come up with. We're all waiting now, my personal opinion, because the, the idea of, uh, of expanding, everybody is waiting for IDL to make a decision. Uh, right now, we don't even have a lease on that parking lot, by the way. And until IDL makes all their decisions, we can't do much. But I think we can work together and solve any problem. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, perfectly, I, I'm perfectly happy to be involved in that process. I just want to make sure that there's not, it's not being foreclosed from doing that. No, it sounds to me like they've actually got to have more spots that are long term. The issue is, you know, you're going to have to get there first. Because it's only a certain size lot. It's the way it is for everybody. Right. We have the same issue yeah. at Cabarton put in, in the on a Saturday morning when everybody wants to raft at the same time. So okay. Anything else, Scott? Uh, no, I just would add that at times we also were we have guests that are coming in and out on snowmobiles, and I guess they would just be relegated to the same rules as everybody else. Right, right. But I would point out the commercial vendors are going to have designated sites to park. And this falls into the commercial category, I believe. Well, we've got to make it a first come, first serve deal. That's the only got way it. you can be fair with folks. Yes, I understand. Okay, we're okay, going to move thanks. on then. Thank you. You bet. Anyone else online that is a proponent of this ordinance? Okay, then we're going to move on to the next category. Anybody that is uncommitted? No one, let the record show that no one is un, uncommitted. And we're going to move on to those that are opposed to this ordinance. Who wants to go first? Mr. Chairman, this is... Yep, go ahead. Who is first? <laughs> I think Jay. Sorry, Jay. This is Jay. Jay, go ahead, Jay. All right, this is Jay Jakes at uh, 47 North Bay Smith. And so, uh, you know, uh, as you know, we've come a long way uh, with our uh, uh, with our actions up here on the business. The biggest issue uh, that I have is uh, Jay, Jay, have you got a computer on somewhere? We're getting a double feedback. Yeah, turn your computer off and then the phone should work. It sounds like the Klingons are landing. <laughs> I think somebody else is on with their phone open too. Or they're not on. Is everybody else muted on your phones? There could be another. Sounds like a fire alarm. There we go. There you got it. Uh, wow, that was crazy. That was. <laughs> huh. uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I didn't know I had that much power. Anyway, um, sorry. <laughs> so the, uh, as you know, we've made uh, progress up here. And uh, some of the issues I have are, you know, in these areas, they're, they're, they're definitely different. So um, there's no business. Uh, first off, there's, there's no parking uh, lot down here. So uh, there are parking areas along the side, but in all the years we've been up here, uh, if we've had friends or family uh, come up, usually uh, the guys will park down there and leave it down below. So if, my question, I guess, is, um, is there designated parking, long overnight parking uh, at no business? That's the first question. Larry, you wanna answer that one? Yeah, Jay, th there is no designated parking down there for long term. And since you'll have your road plowed, they could drive up there. But uh, the road department needs to get their snow plows along the side of that road. So we really can't have long term parking there until we get somebody to donate some land so we can build a parking lot. Isn't there a parking lot at the Donnelly Club? Kind of a small <laughs> parking lot there. Uh, yeah, you can probably get three, but we also need to be able to get the groomer in and out of the groomer garage and over to where the fuel is. So 
actually it limits it to maybe you can get one car in there. So where are people parking now if they want a snowmobile of no business? They're parking on the side of the road, the side and then, of the road. They, then they leave and go home. Yeah. We have had problems with but people but leaving them overnight and then, and then the road department has an issue with that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jay. Legitimately so. Uh, you know, I've had uh, several, you know, my cousin been kind of plowed in twice and, you know, it's no fault of his or no fault of the counties. You know, they're trying to get it plowed. So anyway, uh, as long as everything continues to go well and in the years forward, you know, it's not a big issue. But the verbiage in here doesn't talk to uh, doesn't talk to that. So, it, you know, it just says specific room snow of the trails will be close to wheeled vehicles during certain times. So I don't know if that could be amended if it goes forward to say uh, with exception. Well, I think it certainly could be amended if there's an MOU with a landowner or a, like a person in your position or even the people on Anderson Creek that, you know, if they want to provide uh, there's somebody to plow the road, okay, great, but we want to be able to groom so we can either split the road or you know, we could come to some understanding somewhere with someone, then we can amend this ordinance and change it. But we can't we can't do anything if we don't have long term parking available at no business. There's nothing we can do. Right. Agreed. I'm just saying that in this ordinance, the way it's written, if someone comes up here and let's say for some reason things go south or, you know, we don't have this agreement. And then, uh, you know, someone uh, parks there overnight, uh, they, could, they could be towed away. Yep. So, but that's, okay. that's anyway. the same on any county road. Yeah, 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 okay. Well, we'll continue with our, our progress on the MOU. So, um, could the verbiage then, you're, you're in agreement that the verbiage could be changed to say with exceptions, Per agreement, whatever the verbiage might be um, for these particular areas. Oh, I think so. It's an evolving ordinance. It's not like, you know, if, if we get, like I said, a donated land or we buy some land for a parking lot, that would certainly change the, the designation in the ordinance and we could change the ordinance. It's a, a living document, so to speak. But right okay. now, for this winter, but this winter we yeah. would not be changing the ordinance, yeah. Jay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything yeah, else? I just hope that's it for me. Okay. Is there anyone else on the phone that's opposed? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Kim Gorley. Um, I represent Aspenwood Holdings, and Aspenwood Holdings is opposed. Uh, Ed Pretty Wolf is also here and will speak to testify. Uh, I, I don't want to drive the order of this, but if it's my turn, I'm happy to speak. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, um, again, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners, my name is Kim Gorley. I have an address of 12850 West Wind Court in Donnelly, and then also an address in Keegan, Idaho. Uh, I am an attorney, uh, licensed to practice law in uh, Idaho, and represent Asperwood Holdings. Uh, I was going to primarily focus on the actual verbiage of the proposed ordinance uh, for your consideration uh, as I was reading through it. Um, in uh, section 5-5-2, subsection C, entitled Public Roadways, it uses the term or over the snow vehicles. I think this is a term utilized by the Forest Service. I think uh, I know what's intended by this use, uh, but I will tell you that that term is nowhere defined uh, anywhere that I can find in Valley County ordinances or the Idaho Code. Uh, and so the question is whether that term should be used or whether it should be defined in some way so it's clear what an over-the-snow vehicle is. So I throw that out uh, for your consideration. Uh, then moving forward to 5-5-3 uh, entitled Closed Public Roadways, uh, we had concerns. Uh, and we greatly appreciate the fact that uh, Anderson Creek Road is, is to be uh, exempted or excluded from this ordinance. Uh, what I was looking for and had some communications with Cinda, I appreciate that it was very helpful, uh, but I didn't really get a, a resolution to this question. And as uh, what we are seeking a commitment from the Valley County Commissioners is that uh, Anderson Creek Road would never be 
subject to uh, this ordinance without uh, a proposed amendment to the ordinance uh, being proposed and notice so that there's due process and opportunity to be heard on this. Uh, I couldn't find anywhere in there uh, the proposed ordinance that that would be the case. Maybe it's presumed that that'd be the case. And so this really isn't an issue, but we're respectfully requesting that Valley County Commissioner specifically provide for this uh, or insert this language into the proposed ordinance uh, so that Anderson Creek Road and, and I guess any other roads that might want to be added in the future would, would be subject to uh, that procedural due process that would be allowed. Uh, then I look at subsection C of 5-5-3 uh, and uh, Sid and I had communications, appreciated that, but that whole code sections uh, were slightly in error, but um, I think Sid has corrected that. It's now referred to as Idaho Code Section 67-7101 and 67-7112. Uh, I looked at those Idaho Code sections and I'm not sure they're really saying what the Valley County Commissioners are, are thinking they're saying. You look at the terminology in your ordinance uh, and it provides that following roads and trails should be closed to travel by wheeled vehicles and all other users except those that are allowed by a code section, et cetera. Well, you go read those code sections, they aren't really saying who's allowed uh, to use uh, the uh, closed roadways. All that's happening is one section, 677101, is just definitions of, of vehicles. It doesn't say anything about who can use what. It's just defining what the vehicles are. Uh, and then Idaho Code 67-7112 uh, simply says that counties have the option to allow all train vehicles and snowmobiles over 1,000 pounds, et cetera, to use snowmobile trails. And so I see that there's this option that's there, but neither one of them are specifically stating what I think the ordinance is implying that it's specifically authorizing certain uh, vehicles to use the roads. So I throw that out for the commissioner's consideration of whether some language change needs to occur there. Uh, then as to the last sentence uh, in subsection C, uh, we're just specifically requesting that the commissioners modify that sentence. It seems, if I'm understanding the current intent, uh, it is to specifically exclude Anderson Creek Road from the closure. So I don't think it's necessary to insert the, uh, the first three uh, words at this time. I think those can be struck. Uh, and the sentence should simply read, Anderson Creek Road is exempt from this closure. And then I put a period because the additional phrase doesn't have anything either, but may not be in the future as determined by the Board of County Commissioners. It seems to me that if the county desires to amend the ordinance, it will go through that process, but I don't know why that's being added in unless there's some additional meaning to it, and uh, I'm worried about what that additional meaning is. Uh, and so we're respectfully requesting that uh, that the sentence be deleted as I have articulated uh, for the commission's consideration. Um, the only other thing I would throw in, and, and I'm just not sure whether it's necessary, I don't want to take up uh, time of the Valley County Commissioners unnecessarily, but uh, a year ago when this came up before the commission, I testified about my background uh, in representing highway districts and municipalities and other governmental entities, Idaho Power Company, utility companies with condemnation law. And I walked through sort of the analysis of regulatory takings and inverse condemnation. Uh, I was not anticipating talking about that today uh, because Anderson Creek Road is to be specifically excluded from implication of this ordinance. Uh, but if the commission, uh, as Mr. Chairman, you kind of mentioned is considering uh, changing that language, I guess I'd like the opportunity to speak again, sort of walk through what I think are the significant uh, condemnation ramifications that Valley County would be incurring if it went down that road. Uh, with that, I would uh, uh, defer to Mr. Ed Pretty, who's here on the same uh, conference call with me, uh, to tell you things that he feels are relevant to the commission's consideration. Ed, go ahead. Hello, Commissioners. Good to be with you all. 
Um, and these are always difficult times under COVID, and unfortunately, we end up being separated. And uh, by the way, we were trying to get on your YouTube channel. For some reason, we were not able. To, it's still kind of just showing to us, at least, just so you're aware. Um, it's just showing the the prior um, commission meetings, but um, we might be doing something wrong. We just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, so, in any case, my name is Ed Pretty, address PO Box 1640, Eagle, Idaho 83616. Um, as we have stated before, uh, Anderson Creek is very pro snowmobile, and uh, we have never restricted our roads in the past to snowmobile access. We continue to be open to joint solutions that would allow a sharing of the road, a sharing of access. Um, as you had seemingly just brought up, Commissioner Elk. Uh, this in no means limits the fact that we own portions of the road and have long-standing private property rights and easement rights for access. I know Dave Ferdinand from our group, who's going to speak in a moment, reached out to Commissioner Elk uh, toward, towards that end of how we might widen the road or if you need And we've also said this in the past, if we need to widen the easements from our standpoint on Anderson Creek Road in the future, we're happy to do that. So we've always tried to work well with commissions and with uh, some of the organizations. Um, just to repeat what Kim Borley had said, was which section 5-5-3 below was just especially concerning is that it appeared that the ordinance was passed with that current language, with language and may allow uh, for it to be expanded by an order of the board of the county commissioner has been determined by the board rather than by due process. And so we just had some concern about that. And maybe that language didn't have that intent. Um, that's it, you know, we're, we're happy to, uh, I am a little concerned, Commissioner Oak, when you made a statement that you'd like to add back Anderson Creek Road to gain leverage against private citizens. I don't quite understand that statement, but um, you know we, uh, you know we stand ready to work with the commission and work with snowbirds to share the road. And so that's never been a concern from our standpoint. And uh, we look forward to working together to do that. Yeah, this is Mr. Chairman. Yeah, this is Mr. Chairman. Um, can you explain a little deeper what you mean by share the road? Well, you, I'm just repeating what you just said. That, um, you had mentioned that you thought, we, you know, we reached out and asked if you had a, a solution on Anderson Creek that you wanted us to look at. We have not received that. Um, but when you had mentioned that uh, just a few moments ago, that maybe there was a way to uh, share the road on Anderson Creek with snowmobilers and private uh, wheel vehicles, I'm just referring to that. We're happy to, to work with the snowmobilers and the work with the county to do that. So I have another question for you. Are you guys going to come back in and ask the county to plow this road? No, we are not. It's our understanding that um, that if the, if the road needs to be plowed, that that would be something we would have to do um, and that we can't force the county to, to plow a road. Um, if, on the other hand, there's lots of residents that live up there and they're proud of taxpayers and you think it's it's within the county's, you know, process to do that. That would be up to the county. And, and we have thought about that point. quite a bit because we do realize we're yeah. going to gain a lot of tax revenue from that development. So that, that option is still on the table. And so from our standpoint, though, at this point, um, we don't, no, we have no intent to, um, to try to have the county, have the county, uh, actually plow the road uh, on our behalf. If the road needs to be plowed for us to get access to our residences, um, at this point, we understand that we would have to do that ourselves. And I want to explain to you, when I was talking with David Ferdinand here about three or four weeks ago, we talked about a, an easement through a lot on the north end of, that, and like Larry was talking about, there was some an alternative access that came up through the bottom and to give you guys the whole road, the issue is I ended up with the coronavirus then and was not able to follow through on that for a couple of weeks. So that's why that hasn't happened yet. And I apologize for that. That's okay. Now you're Superman, so you don't have to worry about no, it. <laughs> no, I'm not Superman. No, no. Um, yeah, we, we stand ready to, to, to meet and talk about um, possible alternatives. And, uh, and we do understand that at a minimum, uh, it would never be our intent to do anything less than share the road. So, uh, but we're open to all conversations and all options. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. So I have a question for you. This is a renewal of our old ordinance, correct? The, the current ordinance is an existing ordinance with amendments to um, 
accommodated closures of these roads and then to um, put in new terminology for uh, okay, some so of the, the current ordinance that we have now, not this one, the current one, does it have Anderson Creek on there? It does not. That does entire not. paragraph is not on. Is new. Okay. And I think we left and we we took it out of the ordinance, but left it as a conversation for the future. We know that we have issues there. We know that we need to resolve those issues. <clears throat> we need to move forward on an ordinance for the rest of the grooming program and the rest of it for this winter. So we're out of time to resolve the other issues, but I think we still need to call it out um, just to remember and remind ourselves that this is an issue that does need to be resolved on Anderson Creek. We're not putting it in right now, but we are leaving it there to highlight the issue that we know is there. For people that perhaps might purchase properties up in there, right. I mean, just a public acknowledgement. Okay, is there anyone else on the phone? That I, I had a question it? before we move on. Oh, sorry, Dave. Quick question for Mr. Pretty. Mr. Pretty, this is Dave Bingaman. Um, the question I had is, do you, do you guys suspect that you're going to want to plow the road this winter? Because really what we're talking about is we're trying to get the ordinance in place and whether or not you guys would entertain the maybe a, a road agreement for this winter on a one-year basis while we're trying to work out a an agreement with you guys that would be a long-term agreement obviously you know sharing the road would be a great opportunity for partnership and something that we would be interested in but we're not going to be able to get to that point this winter so we're trying to ensure that we're going to still have the ability to plow that or groom the road this winter so i guess i'm just looking for a solution right there and asking you guys if you have any thoughts on that um, I mean, just in response to that, we, we have no intent of plowing the road this winter. Um, we do not have any residents that have been built up there yet. We have sold a lot recently, and that particular lot buyer is planning on building a residence on lot A, which is the top of the 435 acres of Anderson Creek. But at this time, for this year, um, you know, we have no intent. I'm, I'm not sure legally whether we need an agreement or not. That would be up for... Carol and Kim to chat about that, but um, we don't have any intent of growth this winter, nor do we have any residents living up there at this point in time. Yeah, I guess what I, I was just asking is, you know, like I said, we want to be able to protect our grooming program this winter, and we want to, um, you know, explore our partnership with you guys for the future. So I guess what I'm looking for is how do we maintain a guarantee that we're going to have grooming up there this winter and know that we're going to work together. I mean, a gentleman's agreement, I don't think is going to be quite enough at this point. So has it changed though? I mean, we are currently grooming Anderson Creek Road, correct? Correct. Right. So nothing has changed. So having a written agreement would actually be a change to what's current, currently happening. Right. So we are prepared. We are planning on grooming Anderson Creek Road this year. But as I understand it, like if that person decided to start building in January, there's nothing to preclude them from plowing the road. Um, if it's part of our grooming program, didn't we just settle in court? They can't plow. But this is, I, I think the ownership of this road is different. And so that's okay. where we're going to run into some problems. Okay. Perhaps it's different. I don't, I don't think it's that different. My, the thinking that's going through my head now is if you're stating that they're not going to plow the road this winter, then we could go ahead and put Anderson Creek on this ordinance for this year. I think there are too many issues to resolve to actually include it in an ordinance. I think we need to resolve it outside of this ordinance before we add it, personally. That's, that's the way you feel. I, I, I tend to feel the same way, Sherry. Is that there's, there's a lot of things that we need to resolve before we add this into the ordinance. And I don't think we're there yet with Anderson Creek. Agreed. Which is where I was coming up with the idea of, you know, a one-year agreement pertaining to just Anderson would be something that would be protecting both interests. As, as of right now, I, there, it's not been determined in a court of law or anywhere else. Um, Valley County maintains that road and we're assuming that we have a prescriptive right to that road. Um, they believe that they own that road, we believe that we own that road. So that is the outstanding issue. So right now, if they were going to plow that road, it's our assumption that they would have to get approval from us. From the county. If Correct. they concur with that at this point, 
then it would be your decision um, to leave it out or put it in. But I think that's where it stands. Hey, Ed, you want to add anything else? Yeah, I mean, I would, and I think I'll refer to Kim on this. Just one thing I, um, so we have no, we have no intention of plowing the road this year. Um, have, and I don't have a problem with, you know, uh, making that claim, claim formal. If we need to do that, we can talk about that. That'd be between Kim and Carol as a way to do that. I do want to read to you, though, just as a reminder to the other commissioners. Um, when the grant was made, um, to the county from the Forest Service um, back in December 15, 2006. I just want to read this because I think it's important just that you understand it and, and at least you maybe hear it again. It is, this was when the Forest Service granted uh, the actual easement to the road. The grant was made subject to the following terms and conditions and provisions. One, with outstanding valid claims if any exist on the day of the grant. So. Just we believe that we have outstanding valid claims along with ownership of the road as well as long-term easements. And so when the grant was made, uh, it was made contingent on those, just so you're aware of that from a legal standpoint. And then the second was the easement here and granted limited the use of the described right away for the purpose of construction and operation and maintenance of a highway and does not include the grant of any rights for non-highway purposes or facilities. So just a side note, that was also language and what the definition of a highway is. Um, I think is a legal term and that would be something for Kim and Carol to, to discuss, but I just think it would not be appropriate to add Anderson Creek back in because I think at the moment you add it back in, I, I think it might uh, trigger a taking. And so um, I think it's better to work together towards a good goal and an ultimate end that works for everybody. Um, I think that's the best solution. And so at this time, the fact that it's being groomed and, um, and it's not being plowed at this point in time is fine with us and we have no intent of doing that. So, but I thought that language is important for you to hear because sometimes it's easy to forget how grants and land are made and they a lot of times are made contingent on existing uh, rights. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, David Ferdinand here. And uh, just to let you know, I, I believe we also have uh, one of the newest uh, property owners uh, on the line uh, uh, wanting to give his testimony as well. But I'll, I'll just be real quick. We are uh, continuing to market the Anderson Creek West uh, Mountain Recreation property. As you know, uh, Mr. Commissioner and uh, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the wheel of access to Anderson Creek <coughs> is an important part of the value of those land parcels as we market those. And without access, uh, the value, uh, we believe, is uh, certainly reduced. So uh, that would be all of my testimony, and I would uh, I would uh, see if uh, Jeff uh, uh, Hines is is available as well. Yeah, this is Jeff Hines. Can you hear me? Okay, Jeff. And what town are you from? Not your address, just your town. Okay, Jeff Hines. I'm out of Star, Idaho. Thank you. Um, and as, yeah, and no worries. And as mentioned uh, recently, me and my wife Sandra have made a purchase of a lot in Anderson which is about three quarters of a mile above the, the Anderson Creek Road and West Mountain Road there. We purchased this 23 acres from Aspen Wood Holdings. Certainly no small decision based on the investments in the lot and the future investments and improvements to the lot. We certainly plan on building on that going forward. Our lot is the far uh, northwest end of Aspen with the initial 435 acres and it borders the national forest lands there. So we view this sort of as our dream property and tend to build a home that would be accessed year round um, we are active and the ability to access this property in winter to ski, snowshoe, certainly uh, even possibly snowmobile, even though I've never done that before, while taking advantage of uh, other amenities in Valley County was important to us. Uh, obviously, we do these things. We need unimpeded year-round access to our property from Anderson Creek Road. So with this amendment, as I understand it, Anderson Creek is excluded, but certain concerns that, uh, um, that if it's included at some point, that that's a problem for us in the sense that um, access to our property should not be expected. We shouldn't be expected to hike or snowmobile to our property in deep winter. Considering the fact that our plan is to live full time in our home, we had significant safety concerns around access to fire, ambulance, and other safety services of Anderson Creek Road were ever closed to wheel, uh, wheel vehicles by ordinance or by order of action of the county commissioners. So definitely, I don't oppose this overall. Um, um, 
uh, amendment, but certainly the closure of Anderson Creek Road to wheel vehicles and access to our property, and this is an amendment, and the inclusion of any broad powers granted to the government to impede your round wheel vehicle access, restrict access to safe services, and thus the subsequent evaluation of our property. So such restrictions are imposed by ordinance or order of the county commissioners. So in closing, we're certainly supportive of snowmobiling and recon uh, recognize the need for access, but not as exclusive to ours or other private property during the winter. So I appreciate you giving me the time. Thank you. Jeff, this is Commissioner Hasbrook. When you bought your lot, was it advertised as year-round recreation or year-round access? Um, I yes, I believe it was. I mean, we kind of talked about snowmobile access, and uh, but certainly no. I mean, by a wheel vehicle. I had, uh, potential issues, and I know that the lot wasn't being. Um, uh, I'm sorry, the road wasn't being um, groomed, but uh, recognize that that's something I have to work through between that and some power and some other things. But I certainly believe that buying this lot that I had, um, I had to around access, certainly. Okay, thank you. Even though it might not be. Yep, you're welcome. Is there anyone else on the phone that is an opponent to this ordinance? Hey, Elf. Yes. Sorry, this is Jay again. Real, real quick, I forgot to add one thing. So the uh, the right of way permit uh, punishment, I guess, or whatever its title is, uh, I'm opposed to, to increasing that. To uh, you know, I think it goes to a thousand dollar max and up to six months in jail or something like that for a right of way permit, but. When I talked with Jeff last year, um, this was pertaining mainly to construction and such. Is that still a part is this, of this ordinance? The is it, yeah, are you in 554 under penalty? Is that where you are? It's 573, I think. 57. Uh, I'm just looking at the... I had the pamphlet that you got, or the sheet that you put out that it, it said to invite participants, and it has the... Uh, Summary of changes. I didn't actually look at the actual code. I think it's under five dash. But the bottom paragraph it says a right of way permit shall be issued for any work done in Valley County right of ways. That's true, including road construction, utility, installation, installation, boring, etc. Um, is it changed? There was talked about increasing the penalty on that. Uh, I'm still trying to find it. Is that part of the change? Then? Number three. It's the right of way, chapter seven, rights of way. I mean, that's not is that each of violation of this chapter permit or variance shall be punishable by a civil penalty not to exceed one thousand dollars. I don't believe that has changed. That was adopted by ordinance in twenty thirteen. Yeah, and that's been going on for a long time. Okay. Okay, yeah, I remember there was some verbiage uh, that looked to change uh, the penalty for that. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Anybody else on the phone that wants to say something? No? Okay. Then I guess at this time, we'll go back to Cinda or to Larry for questions. Anything you want to add? I want clarification on one thing. So the ordinance that you are quoting, state statute 5712, uh, sorry, whichever one it is, 677112 states yes. that it's all it it talks about snowmobiles 1,000 pounds and laden gross weight, and our ordinance is 2,000 pounds. It's actually was changed. Uh, what you're seeing on the state website hasn't been updated. It got changed last year to 2,000 pounds. It did. Okay. State too. So we're not against that. Okay. No. And that's a tracked vehicle, right? That could be a track four wheeler. It's a track, track, track vehicle. That's you correct. Know, we figured a pickup was too heavy. Yeah, it could be a UTV, ATV, snowmobile, snow bike, anything under 2,000 pounds, basically. So we had one gentleman um, request that this the, the pounds be taken out and allow under 2,000 pounds also. Under 2,000? Yeah. That is 2,000. That is, it's all under. It's, yeah, it's 2,000 and under. Right oh, up to. Yeah. yeah Sorry. Two. So what was his question? Okay. Well, we've had a lot of guys coming in with full-size groomers that want to run in on their trails, too. That doesn't quite work. Maybe it was over 2,000. Yeah, as you say, we got cats, and then the deal is, is you've got people who have been 
tracks. Snow on but oh, they're way over. Yeah. So that's that's where we put that special authorization, the special authorization permits that we were mm -hmm. giving out that are open to the people who live back there and renters and I don't remember what all the language says. Yeah, we've had guys looking to do snow buses and things like that too. But be well, we have a deal in the ordinances. They come in and ask for it, and it's a, be special, a special permit. permit. Yeah, yeah. We kind of, I think we covered that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> hey, is there anything else? There's a typo we need to correct. Unladen <gasps> is not unladen. It's What's just unladen. Section. It is. Right behind that 2,000 pounds under the definition of snowmobile. Hello, commissioner's room. Yes. So it's on the very first page under definitions 551 snowmobile. It's 2,000 pounds unladen gross weight. There's no ED on it. Yes, there was. Oh, it, it I was see. It, yeah, yeah. It was in the Star News, and I'm in the middle of a public hearing right now, so I'm going to have to hang up on you. Um, if you could call the assessor's office, June can explain it to you. So we're getting phone calls. Yeah, I don't know who's transferred. Did you get that send up? Well, well, I did. But, I think we're on the road station because I get them on Wednesdays. So if they're not being answered elsewhere, they they ring to here. Oh. He wanted to know about DMV. Yes. Okay. So I guess really what it comes down to is do we want to pass what we got now without Anderson Creek or do we want to? I believe one of the um, things, if you decide to leave it with the exception of Anderson Creek, is Mr. Gorley wanted that 553C be clarified it says at this time anderson creek road is exempt from this closure but may not be the future as determined by the board of county commissioners in a public hearing process i think he either wanted to cut off at anderson creek road period i believe that's what ed pretty had also asked or we clarify in a public hearing process the changes would be made well we're in the public hearing now so we can do that now in the public hearing process. Because well, at that. one time I thought Anderson Crick was on there. It's part of our grooming program. And we wanted to include all of our roads that we groom now into this ordinance. It was on there up until about a month ago. I was told to include Anderson Creek Road as an exception at this time. Um, and to um, state that may not be in the future to give people notice that it is being considered for inclusion as a closure. Um, but the people it opposed, Mr. Gorley and Mr. Pretty, either wanted to say period after Anderson Creek Road or clarify that it can only be changed in a public hearing process. I prefer to put public process on there. Absolutely. So that sentence would read, Um, unless mitigated uh, at this time Anderson Creek Road is exempt from this closure but may, may not be in the future as determined by the Board of County Commissioners in a public hearing process period so we will include that I'm okay with adding that one And then the definition of over the snow vehicles that they brought up. Isn't that anything that's tracked under 2,000 pounds? So the definition of a snowmobile is in the state ordinance. I don't think we would add or change anything on that. It's a tracked vehicle under 2,000 pounds. So can we just state the, the Idaho ordinance code? It's in the state. Yeah, I, I had it and I, I left it sitting on my desk at the house or I'd have brought that with me. Well, it so says, that's not the Idaho code 
6771701. It's 6770112, I think. 7101. Yeah, it might be yeah, in well, definition. I was just saying, I, I haven't looked at either of those two sections, but as I say, um, yeah. Ms. Gorley said that it was the definitions were in 7101. Yeah, definitions are 7101. And then 7112 gives into more detail about what exactly it is and what a Snowville Road is. But he, if you go to 552C, it says public roadways. The following restrictions apply to public ro roadways where travel by wheeled vehicles or over the snow vehicles may be expected. They said that over the snow vehicles is not defined anywhere. So can we define it per Idaho code, whatever the code says, and over the snow he vehicles? Said Idaho state statute does not define over the snow vehicle. That is a correct It statement. does. It does? It okay. does. I am not seeing that, Larry. On 7101, it defines snowmobile. Yeah, I think you've got to go 7112. And like I said, I looked it up yesterday when, or a couple days ago when Cinda called me and I had it sitting on my desk. But does it define over the snow vehicle? Yes. Green. Or we could, but um, I'm sure it does. It doesn't use that term that I can find. Which term? Over the, the snow. snow. On either one of those sections. Yeah, because it go, it says OSV, and everything becomes OSV at that point. You're looking at something different then. You want to go down and get it off the desk? Are you sure that's not like an IDPR? my house. Are you, sure huh? Are you sure that's not something that IDPR puts out? No, no. I I'll, I can I can send it back in. So we can. But I don't know if it really affects. Like I say, anything. we could just say with that amendment clarified, I'd be comfortable with that as long as we clarify that. When I look up over the snow vehicle, it says an over the snow vehicle is defined as a motor vehicle that is designed for use over snow and that runs on a track and or ski or skis while in use over snow. But it doesn't have a weight restriction. Not in this definition. That's why the state does. Does it? Okay. Yeah. You need to find that then to make sure. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll get it for you because I helped get that legislation fast when they did it. It wasn't easy. We're not seeing what we reference, so we may have to reference something different. Because the, the original was just 1,000 pounds, and we wanted to allow the UTVs to be able to go on track UTVs, and that way it increased it to 2,000 pounds. So it seems to me like we don't need – we're not ready to pass this yet today, Cindy. I think we still got some more work to do on this. You can table it to the, seven. To the next meeting. Which is the 7th, I said? Yeah. Um, so that you can review these changes that are going to be clarified. I think that's what I'm going to do today. I don't think we're quite ready yet. I still want to do a little more research on on the Anderson issue because, um, as I stated earlier, we're going to lose our leverage there if we allow them to take it off. I don't know if you remember or not, Elk, but one of the things that's hanging me up on the Anderson Road is that um, District Ranger for Cascade came in and testified last spring when we did this and he said that he did not believe that we had a claim to this road and i think there's mm. just too much out there right now for us to include it based on the unknown i agree with that and then yeah some people think that we do because it was the road that went over to council right but we should clarify that before we right. pass it into an ordinance right. that, but that, was the and that, that was the reason that the forest service actually gave us that as a as an easement is because we were going to claim it as a RS2477. And of course the Forest Service always says we don't have those. Okay, so then Doug, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and table this until your purview for uh, a time on December 7th. Well, we need a specific time. Well, he's going to look it up right now. <clears throat> Back to my hiding hole. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kevin, could you hold on for a second? It's two in the afternoon. I think when Brian said something, he was referring to Patty's. 
One thirty, Mr. Chairman, on one, December seventh. One thirty. Okay, I'm going to table this to one thirty on December seventh. Anything else? If not, this public hearing is done, and we'll move on down to our agenda. And I guess Richard Avila is not here. Mr. Avila will be testifying via teleconference. Unfortunately, I think he was provided a different number, Mr. Chairman. So if I can, if you can ask if he's on this line. If not, I'll Richard, are you on the phone? Is there anyone on the phone? We'll probably have to hang up, and start over. Let me try this. While you're trying to get him, I had Lori bring in the Simcoe Estates file. So I have some information. What kind of information are you going to give us? Well, I've got some interesting information that's without that's actually going, finding the minutes. Into the extension of the person you want to call, the meeting. Okay, Richard, you're on the phone. Okay, Richard, you're on the phone. You want me to wait for the gentleman to be on the phone? Yeah. Okay. Do you know how many folks live out in Simcoe right now? How much what? How many residents are out in Simcoe? I, Richard, are you online? Yes, I am. Hey, welcome, sir. Um, I understand you want to request Hi. maintenance on Zoom Lane, so I'll go ahead and let you uh, uh, say your piece. Well, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, we're um, having a home where the home is almost nearly built. It's on uh, 12966 Zoom Lane. It's there in the Simcoe uh, properties there. Uh, off of uh, Parker Loop and Barker Lane, and all of those county, and it's a county road, and all of the county roads within there are already being plowed. I'm just requesting for it to be added to it since we're now a resident there. Um, um, I don't know exactly what reasons you guys would like me to be able to list other than the fact that I'm, I live in the county, we pay taxes. Uh, for the county road maintenance, um, we had a building permit already um, uh, placed on it, and um, it would be kind of hard if we, once we get in it, which will be in a very short time for emergency services to get to us and, you know, God forbid, a fire or, or somebody gets hurt if, if it's not fire. So I don't know if those are sufficient or not, but that's what it is. Hey, Richard, a couple of statements and a question. Um, none of our taxes go to our road department in Valley County. It's all funded by gas tax and uh, SRS funds, so none of your taxes go to the road department. The, the, my first question is, do you have a place at the end of it for a grader to turn around? Is there a cul-de-sac? Oh, yes, there's a cul-de-sac at the end. Uh, it attaches to Barker Loop, and Barker Loop is in part of what... Um, uh, the plow comes around on and it just tees into Barker Loop and it goes straight to the end, makes a left hand turn, and it down at the end is a uh, uh, turnaround. And that's all County Road? Yes, sir. And is this road paved? Yes. Okay. So I guess my feeling is I'm going to have to talk to my road supervisor to see if he can squeeze that in to his one of his routes. We have 18 routes right now, and so it's a matter of having enough time to do that before I could give you an answer. Okay. Is, are you guys are you guys already I, living I there? Have a map in front of it. At least it looks like it would be a fairly easy inclusion onto the Barker Lane or the Barker uh, Loop um, route that they take. Yeah, our esteemed Commissioner Moffin has it up online, and we can see all those through our GIS. Okay. Dave, go ahead. And see how we tie in, and it just runs into the end and makes a left hand turn there. All right, I was just going to ask you, Mr. Ovia, are you guys currently occupying the residence or are you still in the building process? Uh, we are planning to move in um, by the middle of next month, and we have builders who are in and out of it right now at this point. Who's been plowing it now? Uh, up until this point, uh, it has been plowed by Simco because they have to keep it open. Uh, there's a uh, at the end. There's a fire fire plant. So Simcoe is plowing that road now. Has been 
Well, they didn't do it this year. And this is the first, the first snow. But it has in the past. Because there was no one living on the road. So is that a homeowners association or how's that? Uh, yes. So did you have any questions? What's just what's the grade? Is that a steep road? What or is, it, grade? is it steep? Oh no, it's a no, it's a general uh, downhill incline. So what I found, you know, before talking to Jeff, I pulled the file, um, and there's a road development agreement that was entered into. Um, when the subdivision was developed, for the road development agreement that I, I see, I don't have the signed copy, but it says, Valley County will inspect the construction of improvements to Barker Lane described in section two of the roads um, in proposed simple estates phase one and will accept the roads for year-round maintenance by the Valley County Road Department at public expense when certified to comply with the county specifications by the county engineer and road supervisor. The level of maintenance shall be set at sole discretion of the Board of County Commissioners. That's typically, you know, the, the terminology used. It's mm -hmm. set by the Board of County Commissioners. And then later on, there was an entry in the minutes of the Board of County Commissioners dated November 27th of 1995. Um, and Commissioner Wallace moved, Gestern seconded, motion carried that upon recommendation of the road supervisor and county engineer to accept the roads and some road states for inclusion in the county road system and authorize the road department to maintain the road year round at public expense the snow removal is needed for year-round residents according to the priority C of the policy for maintenance of streets and highways and subdivisions in Valley County and to release the surety passed by some code states. So apparently they built it to the county standards and made that motion and interpret it how you like. So it sounds to me like they built a good road in there and it's all up to county specs and now it's our turn to step up and take it over. So that's my feeling. And since it is close, it's since it is so close to occupancy, then you know, I think that that's where the, the obligation lies. It is different than the one, the last one that we got where he was going to be late spring before he got into it. So this one, if he's in the middle of next month, they're nearing <coughs> completion and we probably should go ahead and start plowing. So, you know, and just, I mean, only because the motion said that when it was adopted, when it was accepted, right. specifically for this one. It's not a policy that if somebody builds a house and they live in it, that we're going to plow to it. Correct. With, with that understanding. It's just that was the motion made. Sounds like we still need to have Jeff or Superintendent Rose go out and check it out prior to. You've seen it. Yeah. And then that zoom lane that takes off there at that turn. That doesn't exist. That's a Google thing. It doesn't exist? No, it does not. So there's no turnaround? Yeah, there's a cul-de-sac right over here that's a turnaround. Yeah, this is an LT. You need to give me a call. It where like this. You have a person who wants to uh, here have Zoom lane plowed in Simcoe Estate. I'm sorry, come look at it on my computer. Him, I can't. It's all I don't know. It's all down up. It's down paved. There is a cul-de-sac at the end. It's a pretty short driveway. So right so here is the cul-de-sac? We're feeling like we need to right there. authorize right that. The cul -de -sac. Right here there is a cul-de-sac. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Bye. But see, my Google shows zoom <coughs> down this way. Oh, got it. Oh, gotcha. So, okay. So Cindy is saying there is a cul-de-sac there. Correct. Right. If, so. if you can zoom in, oh, you yes, can see Oh, yes. Now it. I can see the cul-de-sac. So, Mr. So, yeah. Avila, I guess what we're at, we're at right now, we're trying to get hold of the road supervisor. And uh, as soon as I can mm -hmm. talk to him, he can give us an up or down on that. And then I'll, we'll give you a call back and let you know. Would that work? Okay, very good. 
Yeah, what's a good number to reach you? 209. 209. 404. 404. 209-404-8611. 209-404-8611. Okay, as soon as I find out, I'll let you know. Thank you so much. All right, have a good day. You too, thank you. Goodbye. Thanks. And if there's nothing else to discuss, anybody else have anything they need to talk about? This meeting is adjourned.